All right. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you for today. We thank you for your goodness, your faithfulness, your kindness. Oh, Lord, we just love you. We just come to to listen to your voice. And I just want to thank you, Lord, for this opportunity for us to meet one another, to gather around your word together. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this time. Come touch our hearts. Touch our hearts with your word. We want to we want to fall in love with you more, Lord. We want to walk closer with you. Thank you, Lord, for that. I thank you for just a refreshing time in this class that we just grow deeper in love with you. Lord God, I ask you just to touch us deep within in our inner man. We just love you, and we just give this time to you now, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, if we want to go to page one. Now, um, as I said before, I think there's like 28 pages printed off right now. They'll end up being over 100 pages in your booklet when it's all full. And um, the reason I didn't print it all off is because I don't know exactly what... I'm going to be teaching in what spot and what area along the way. Um, So that gives me a little freedom there. But we are going to be going through the Song of Solomon verse by verse. We will cover every single verse of the eight chapters of Song of Solomon. Some we'll give more time to than others. Some we'll sit on for a bit and some we'll just read over um, briefly. But... um, we're going to be looking at the spiritual. I feel like I feel like we're starting a class, and this is kind of like I'm going over the syllabus on the first day here. But we are going to get to the first couple of verses of Song of Solomon. But there's some stuff that we need to uh, lay groundwork for um, before we do that. But we're going to be looking at the spiritual interpretation of the Song of Solomon. The Song of Solomon um, is mostly taught from the spiritual interpretation of it. Sometimes people will use the book of Song of Solomon to actually teach on married love and that growth in relationship there, but we're going to be looking at it solely from the spiritual interpretation. Um, On that first page, and I'm not going to be obviously reading this whole thing to you, I would recommend that you go and you can read through it more later on, but on the first page I have where my information comes from. So, in um, in 2010, um, my mom and I and Christina and some friends of ours, my daughter Christina and some friends of ours, went out to um, International House of Prayer in Kansas City to a big conference that they have at the end of every year called the One Thing Conference. And um, my life was completely changed by that conference. Like, I grew up in a spirit-filled home my whole life, learning the Word of God my whole life, and there were things in that, at that conference that I had not ever heard. Like, I knew the power of our declaration, the power of our confessing the Word, but I had never heard somebody teach about confessing my relationship with God, that God loves me, making that a part of my declaration. God loves me, and I am a lover of God. And hearing this message that just provoked my heart to go deeper with my personal walk with the Lord. At the time I went out there, I was teaching the Word. I loved to teach on renewing your mind, confessing the Word, all of those strong... um, Uh, uh, teachings in the Word of God, but this was a time where the Lord just took me down to this place of, I want to know you, and He wants to know me, and I want to I want to talk to you, and I want to be a friend of God, not just a servant of the Lord, but a friend of the Lord. And it took me down this uh, new path that um, I just started really consume as much as I could on the subject and really just sit before the Lord. 
the um, International House of Prayer has had a prayer room going. They're on their 20th year now. Um, so they've gone 19 years. And, um, and, uh, and, um, lost my train of thought. That's okay. And they have gone 24 seven worship and prayer for 19 years, which is they're on their 20th year. They've completed 19 years. They're on their 20th year, which is unbelievable, but, uh, they have it on the web. You can actually get on there, and I started to just sit before the Lord, have the prayer room on at my home, and just really plug into this whole, anything I could get a hold of that was on the heart of God. The heart of God for me, my heart being um, pulled towards His, growing in my one-in-one relationship with the Lord. And um, one thing I came across was Mike Bickle's teaching on the Song of Solomon. He has three different teachings out there. He has one that's 24 lessons long, and then he has two others that are 12 lessons long. And I just started reading it and studying it and consuming it. And so a lot of my information comes from him. Um, One thing I want to point out is that he's been teaching it for 30 years after he had a very clear prophetic word from the Lord in July of 1988 that he was supposed to actually base his ministry around this book. Now, he's the son of a boxer. He played football in college, and he was not happy about this. He's like, Lord, give that message to the women's ministry. This isn't really what I want to do. And it was that clear to him that this is what the Lord was calling him to that he started to dive into it. He has over 150 books and commentaries on the Song of Solomon. Who would have guessed that that would have been? There's that many out there written on this book. And I mean, honestly, gals, I don't know if I had ever read the book before this. And if I had, it hadn't impressed me. You know, I hadn't gotten anything out of it. So it wasn't until I started to come along somebody that really had studied it out and really had dug out the spiritual truth that it really started to uh, uh, touch my heart. Another um, thing uh, that you'll see in our, in our manual is the Passion Translation. Y'all heard of the Passion Translation? I'm not sure exactly how long it's been out now, but it's a, it's a new translation in the, last in the last five, years. five, six, seven years, something like that. And um, they've done the New Testament, Proverbs, Psalms, and the Song of Solomon. And um, it's awesome. The Passion Translation is awesome. Not only is the translation itself really fun to read, um, but the footnotes are super uh, in-depth and very, very thorough and very good. And then I also um, looked at online the Cambridge Bible for schools and colleges, I'm sorry, the, um, yeah, um, and we'll see some quotes out of there. So you guys can read up on that more if you want to. Something I want to point out from the get-go, you know in our Bibles how there's um, the little black, <coughs> I'm sorry, the little dark print, um, like a title at the top of the, the chapter. Some Bibles have it, some don't. In the Song of Solomon, <coughs> As you read through the Song of Solomon, it will actually tell you who is speaking at that point. The thing is, is the original text does not tell you that. And so it wasn't, so if you look in the, even the King James Version, it doesn't have that. A lot of the older translations don't have that, but it's the newer the newer translations where they've put those head headings in of who's speaking to help the reader understand for the most part people agree on who's talking when but there are some that they don't and we'll talk about that because it kind of makes a big difference Um, there are some areas where um, it needs to be clarified and so when you, <laughs> excuse me, um, when you are looking at the scripture in the manual, I have put who's speaking 
on each verse. That's good. Yeah. Now, obviously that's who I think is speaking because of stuff that I've read and researched. Um, but it does not coincide with my new King James Bible in areas. And uh, we will actually talk about those when we get to them. All right. Um, the three areas we're wanting, why do we want to study this book? Okay. And I'm going to be honest with you all. I've been studying it for a long time now. And when I was going over the stuff for this class, I was getting provoked once again. You know, just stirred up once again about my relationship with the Lord. We study this book because we want to know him more. And so the goal is our relationship with the Lord leading to partnership with him. And this really needs to be a goal in our life period. It's something the Lord has kind of transformed in my own life, and I'm not near there yet, but I want to be, and I'm aware of it, is I, I love to serve. I love to teach the word. I love to be involved. I'm, a, I'm actually, in my nature is a doer, okay? And I'm not a big, like, let's just sit and, like, for me to sit, to learn to sit at the feet of Jesus was a lot for me to just learn to be still and to talk to him and listen to him. Because my nature is a doer, and I think a lot of us are um, geared that way. The, the thing is, is we want our doing to be fruitful, right? We want it to be healthy. We want it to be life-giving. We want it to be producing life. And that only happens if the relationship is first. So it's the relationship of the Lord, the one-on-one -on -one talking to the Lord, hearing his voice, feeling his heart towards us that empowers us and equips us to serve well in partnership with him. You know, you can actually serve the Lord without partnering with him. Amen. You know, we can go and we can do lots of good works without any input from the Lord on it. But when we partner with him and we have his anointing and we have his strength and we have his direction and his guidance there, that comes because we've cultivated a friendship with him and we want to be friends of God. So that's our primary focus in studying the book. The second one is... Um, coming into an understanding of God's emotions, which kind of sounds weird if I just say it that way, but that is understanding who God is. God is passionate about us. He loves us. And he doesn't just love us because he has to, because he's God and God is love. He actually loves us because he loves us individually. Like he loves who we are. He loves how he's made us. He is crazy about us. And when we have this understanding of this happy God who's happy to know us, who's happy to be with us, who loves us fervently, who has an awesome plan for our lives, when we understand that, then we're able to run well. We're able to love others fervently. Um, I'll share um, a lot about a time in my life where I was, a lot of junk was going on in my life and a lot of issues and a lot of problems. That was like the high level of <laughs> issues and, and things like that, just ongoing for a couple year period. And um, I knew the word. And I knew I was supposed to confess it. I knew I was supposed to speak life. I knew I was supposed to take my thoughts captive, but I was not doing it well. And it was this, focusing on God's character and emotions that brought stability to my life, where I began to pace and pray and proclaim, God, you're good and you're faithful and you're faithful to me. And you have a good plan in this person's life. And you have a good plan for this situation. And I can trust you. 
And I just began to really dig into the heart of God. And so that is super emphasized in the Song of Solomon. We want to see him. We want to see his heart. Because as we will know, I mean, who in here has ever had an issue with a child? If you have children. If you have children, you have. A husband, a, a family member, finances, health. I mean, every single one of us have had issues and struggles and things we've had to press through. We are all normal. We've all lived lives, and maybe my struggles look different than your struggles, and health issues look different than mine, and you know, all those different things look different. But in our life, they're a big deal. You know, to me, my issues, my problems, my it's a big deal. But when I press in and I'm like, God, you are a big God, and you are bigger than these, and you like me. You like me. There was a time where I started, and I still do this, but I remember one of the first times I did it, I came to the Lord. I was so upset. Oh, by the way, I'm a crier, for those who don't know. It's, everything's good. I just like to cry. Uh, but I remember coming before the Lord, and I was just at the end of everything that was happening, and I was trying to fix, trying to make it okay, trying to figure it out. You all know those things? And I remember coming to the Lord and going, God, here I am, your daughter, your favorite whom you love. And when we say things like that, it brings this new place in our life where we're like, oh, all right, I forgot that for a second. God likes me. He's forming. God is not holding out on us. He's not upset at us. He's not um, trying to teach us a lesson. He will use everything in our life to teach us and grow us up. But God is not mad. He is not upset at us. So that's something that we're going to really dive into as we um, study the Song of Solomon. And the last focus is the first and second commandment, growing in the first and second commandment. We shall love the Lord our God with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind, and all our strength, and... Love our neighbor as ourself. So often we're trying to do this stuff and we're getting it out of order where it's by us receiving the love of God that we overflow with love back to him and to others around us. And that's part of the victory. Praise the Lord. It's so fun to see growth. Wouldn't we like it so much quicker? <laughs> Woo! I would like it so much quicker than it happens, but it's so fun to look back and see growth and see, ah, even um, my husband and I, we were driving to church the other night to <laughs> do um, sign-ups for small groups, and we were going to go to the service Sunday morning and do the sign-ups, but we were just coming Saturday night at the end of service to do sign-ups, and huge car accident out on 34, two cars, poof, flew, uh, fire, and like bad, it was bad. And uh, it took us a little over an hour, what would normally take 25 minutes to drive to church. And we're coming down the back road and Fred goes, wow, you're doing good. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, I am. But I really need to go to the restroom. <laughs> Can we hurry up? But it was really cute because, like, he's like, wow, Carrie's not freaking out right now. She's like, oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, people. Move, go around that, uh, you know, the roundabout. They're all confused. So many cars. And I, it was, it's fun to see growth in our life. It's fun to look back and say, no, I'm not where I want to be. But I am moving forward. I am pressing towards the prize. And God is cheering me on. And he is my helper. He is my friend. He has all the answers. He's super smart. And he's for us. He's for us. And so uh, we just dive into that. We want to become students of God's emotions. We want to look in the word. And when, we, when we're reading the word and we see, 
you know, that Jesus was moved with compassion. We circle that. And we're like, Jesus, you're moved with compassion towards me. You're moved with compassion towards my person who's not doing too well right now. You're moved with compassion towards that person who offended me. And we start saying these things out and God actually instills in us a heart of compassion. He puts his nature in us, not by us trying to forgive, trying to not be offended, trying to be nice. He puts his nature in us by us focusing on his nature. And when we focus on his nature, and I mean, I'm talking about being um, intentional about it. God, show me you. Show me who you are. Then it transforms us. Um, So page three... Um, Jesus makes this statement, John 17, 26. And I have declared to them your name. Jesus is having a conversation with God. And he says, God, I've declared to them your name. His name is his character, and we'll study that a little bit more in a bit. His name is his character. He says, I've declared to them your name. Jesus declared the name of God by what he said, but also by what he did. It says that if we've seen Jesus, we've seen the Father. Um, You want to know what God's like? Read the Gospels and read them over and over and over and over again. I love to camp out in the Gospels. I love to look and see Jesus' compassion. I love that he touched the man with leprosy to heal him. I love that. And we see the heart of Jesus. He says, I've declared to them your name and will declare it. That, there's a reason, that the love with which you loved me, Jesus said that, that the same exact love, Father, that you have towards me may be in them and I in them. I want to share. Jesus is like, I want to share with everybody. This is who he is. God's good. God's nice. He heals. He forgives. This is who he is. He declares it. And the purpose is that it would develop the same kind of love in us. That's the purpose of declaring. We don't love by trying harder. We don't. We don't forgive by just, okay, I forgive. I forgive. Have you ever forgave somebody like hundreds of times? Not not for the same offense. I mean, not for a different offense, the same offense. Like you just over and over and over. And, And one day I was talking to the Lord about this. I'm like, Lord, I've forgiven that like so many times. Why does it keep coming up? And he says, instead of calling out, okay, Lord, I forgive that person again. He he says to me, I want you to start declaring your heart of love for them. So instead of, okay, I forgive so-and-so. Like, this is the 200, 300, 400th time I've forgiven them. Instead of that, Lord, I thank you. I love them with your love. Thank you, Father, that the same love with which you love me pours out of me to them. And he does that. He does that. We try to do things instead of just talking to the Lord about him and saying, Lord, give me your love. Flow your love out of me. So for us to do this, we actually have to know God. Right? We actually have to know him. Like he's really nice. He's really good. You'll hear me say that over and over. Get it in your language. Get it in your mouth. When you walk around your house, when you're driving in your car, when you're dealing with situations, begin to declare the goodness of God. God, you're faithful. God, you're faithful in this. God, you're faithful when I'm faithless. Doesn't that work out nice? Yeah. Right? God, you're good all the time. You're good to me. God is good to me. And we start declaring these things. We start declaring his generosity. He's so generous. He's so generous with his forgiveness. He's so generous with his mercy. 
He's so generous with all of his promises and all of his benefits. And we begin, instead of begging God, God, would you please just move? I mean, have you ever done that? I did it the other day. I'm like, God, I don't talk that way to you, but I am right now. Would you please just move? And, and then I stop. Because we have those moments, right? We have flesh. Oh, that's right, God, you're super generous. You withhold nothing. Wow, all of a sudden that, God, would you please move? What? He's super generous. He withholds nothing. And I start to get that in my language. I believe you, God. When you said this, I believe you. When you said this, I believe you. So we want to get that in our language. Um, I was just talking to the Lord this morning. I'm like, Lord... I am not going to be like, we have to move. Come on, people. Let's get to verse 3. Uh, because that's my tendency is to stay on schedule. But I just feel like we need to lay this groundwork before we get into the song, uh, the, um, the verses. And it will be worth it. Okay, y'all with me? Yeah. God talking to y'all? Little adjustments. He wants to make little adjustments. Oh, yeah, that's right, God. I, in that situation, I'm looking at you as being unfaithful. I don't want to see God unfaithful ever, ever. And if I have that come up in me, do you know how I know God is never unfaithful? Because the word says he's never unfaithful. He says he's always faithful, always faithful. And so when I look at a situation and my, my heart starts to judge him unfaithful, I look at it and I go, oh, we need to do an adjustment. Okay, God, you're faithful. Holy Spirit, come. Show me the faithfulness of God. Remove this lie. Replace it with the truth, Holy Spirit. We have these conversations with him. Verse, or, um, page four. Uh, I already <laughs> talked about this. We're looking at the spiritual interpretation of the Song of Solomon. Um, okay, there's four main characters. The first one is King Solomon, or the beloved, or the bridegroom. He's called all the three things. And pretty much we just look at that as Jesus. Okay? King Solomon, <coughs> excuse me, the beloved and the bridegroom is Jesus. Um, I love that because he's a king, but he's a bridegroom. He's a king. He's all powerful. He's conquered all. He's defeated all for us, but he's a bridegroom. He longs relationship with his creation. He longs to know you personally. He really likes me. And he really likes you. And we need to say that. When we feel disappointed and let down, we need to stop ourselves and remind ourselves, he's our bridegroom. He loves us. He is passionate about our success and our happiness. He really is. He doesn't want us being all mopey and sad. He wants us to be life-giving, fruit-bearing. He wants us to affect the world with his love. Not be consumed with, oh man, I disappointed God, or upset God, or frustrated God. If we have that mindset, we need to renew our mind to the truth. He is the bridegroom. Um, two is the Shulamite maiden. Uh, this is the picture of the Bride of Christ, the church, or us. We are the Shulamite maiden, okay? And we're going to put ourselves in her place as we read the Song of Solomon. That is us. This is her journey. It is such a fun journey to, to study because it's so much like us. 
like one minute she's just like so happy with the bridegroom she loves the bridegroom she's sitting under the apple tree and then the next minute she's like i don't want to get out of bed i don't want to go up the mountain i'm done you know and you see her journey and you're like oh yep mm -hmm. and we're all on this journey and I really believe that we can be at different places in the journey and different places in our life. And we have these different pro processes and progresses. But what's so awesome is it's okay. It's okay that it's a process. It's okay that we're just moving forward. That's the whole goal is I am with my partner, Jesus. He's talking to me every day. He's showing me the areas in my life he wants me to grow up in. Do you ever grow up in an area and then you think you're really doing good until that area gets severely challenged? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you're like, I mean, it just takes somebody to come live with you for a little bit that's not your own people like normal. And it's like, wow, my whole life has been challenged right now just by my schedule being interrupted and, you know, whatever the situation is. Can somebody grab Patsy a chair and bring it over in that corner? Thanks. Appreciate it. Um, so then we also have the Daughters of Jerusalem. They're the third um, major characters that we, we have. And the Daughters of Jerusalem, you'll hear about them quite a bit. I love the Daughters of Jerusalem because who they represent is they are the... Immature, but wanting to learn. And so they come to the maiden and they'll ask her questions because they want what she has. They want to understand why is she so happy with the bridegroom when things are not going good. And so they'll ask her questions. And then the last one is the watchmen. The watchmen are um, representative of spiritual leadership. Um, in those days, the watchmen were the ones who guarded the city and protected the walls. And we'll see something happen with the watchmen <laughs> in the story. Um, the watchmen, at one time, she seeks out the watchmen for um, help and advice. And then at another time, um, the watchmen wound her and hurt her and disappoint her and we'll see how does she react to those things and so um, those are the four main characters I'll let you guys read the end of that page on your own um, page five weekly homework um, you don't have to come you don't have to do anything but come to class and if you want to just sit and come to class and participate you know that's awesome but if you would like to have some homework and grow more. Um, I would recommend you read through the study notes because I'm not going to be touching on everything in class. There's going to be some stuff I won't even talk about at all. I would recommend that you read through that. Um, and then I would recommend <laughs> that you get a notebook. Now, I grew in this, and I'm not sounding like I'm great because I'm not. I'm not. I like do, I mess up a lot. And you guys will hear about it. It's really fun. I tell you about my mess ups. But I grew in this because I did it. Yeah. I grew in this, this truth because I was desperate enough to be like, God, I have to have more of your heart. I have to quit striving and actually walk in relationship with you. So what I did was what... Um, I don't know if Mike Bickle said to do this. It was actually in one of Christina's classes on the Song of Solomon that her teacher had them do this, and that's when I did it. What I did was I got a notebook, and so you want it fairly good size, and I wrote out every verse, and I didn't just write the verse. I wrote the verse, and then I wrote how the verse, what it spoke to me, what it meant, and I wrote out other verses that backed up what I was learning. So we're going to go over today, um, kiss me with the kisses of your word, or kiss me with the kisses of your mouth is the verse. Um, and then I started right out, Lord, touch my heart with the kisses of your word. 
prayers to him. We want this in our language. We want to get this in our mouth. We start to speak something and it causes, it gives the Holy Spirit a seed to plant within us and cause it to become reality. We speak the word out. We come into agreement with the word. We break agreement with the lies. We come into agreement with the Lord. Word, Lord, touch my heart with the truth of your word. Touch my heart with the deep things of you. And I would just start. And so I would, I would give some verses. Some verses get two, three pages. Other verses, they, they get just a little bit. But the ones that touched me, I sat on them. I wrote, I wrote prayers around them. I wrote down, and, and you can see that they're in different colored ink because I came back and I did it again. And I've come back and I do it again and I add things. Um, I wrote down one thing I desire and I seek is you. Just one day I'm going through this and the Lord touches my heart again. We, this is, so this is something I would really, really encourage you. I like journaling a lot, so I'm always going to push journaling. But this is something, if you want to really grow in the truth of this study, get a journal and just start writing out the verses. We'll go over all of them and turn the verses into prayers, declarations, write down other scriptures that back up that verse. Um, I love this one. I had written this down. Um, I am my beloved and his desire is for me. We don't get to that till I don't know, chapter four or five or six. But think of that, just stopping. God, I'm your beloved and your desire is for me. Hallelujah. That we get that in our language. That we're disappointed with ourselves. We're disappointed with our situation. We're frustrated with what's going on. And we stop and we proclaim I'm yours. I'm yours. All of it. All of it's yours. I'm yours. And your desire, your heart, your passion, your, your, he actually leans forward to hear me when I talk to him. He listens to me. That's what stirs up in our heart. In the middle of chaos, in the middle of disappointment, in the middle of frustration, if we can get this in our language, our hearts are kept from bitterness. Our hearts are kept from anger. Our hearts are kept from quitting. I mean, I don't know about y'all. I'm tem I don't even know what that looks like, like quitting. Oh, I'm just going to quit. What does that even look like? <laughs> But I was thinking about the other day, and I was like, oh, man, I'm just not even going to try liking that person anymore. <laughs> now, I told you all I'm just going to tell you how I am because I know you all are the same way. There's a, few, there's a few people that are born super, super saintly. And then there's the rest of us that have to, like, plug into Jesus. <laughs> and I, I actually thought that. I'm like, I'm just going to quit trying to have my heart be right towards that person because they just really frustrate me a lot. And um, so then I thought, well, that's quitting, right? And what does that look like, Lord? Like, what does quitting look like? I just start having, whenever you have a negative thought, a negative emotion, just go talk to Jesus. It's really awesome because those become just triggers. I'm thinking negatively. I need to go talk to the Lord, right? Um, I'm like, Lauren, what does that even look like? And he's like, well, what that looks like is you can either press through, and it's a lot of work. It just is, y'all. This is a lot of work. It is a lot of work to walk in love towards people, to forgive people that have hurt you repeatedly. It's a lot of work. He's like, you can put the work in, and you can have a heart that is good and solid. Or you can quit, and you can become bitter and angry and mean and ugly. Those are your choices. It's true. Because sometimes we're like, it's so much work. <laughs> but what is the option? I don't want to get out of bed. Yeah, it's like so much work. <laughs> but then it's like, what is the option, you gals? Literally, what's the option? Yeah. 
anger, bitterness, confusion, frustration, turmoil of the mind. No, I don't want to do that. All right, page five. Pray reading the word. I'm going to touch on this very lightly, but I really, really want you all to go home and look through this closer. Mike Bickle talks about something called he calls pray reading the word. It's getting in the word, and I would really recommend, like I said before, <laughs> the Gospels. And we start reading through the word, and we stop, and we talk to God about it. Okay? We are pray reading the word. Now, we're going through the Song of Solomon, right? We want to stop, and we want to talk to God about it. So I gave the examples. Um, he gives the examples of stopping and thanking God. And then stopping and asking for more revelation. Okay? So in the Song of Solomon, I gave the example of Song of Solomon 4.9. You have ravished my heart. Father, thank you that I ravish his heart. That, that you are moved by me. That you love me. You love me with an intense love. And we, we talk to God. And I'm going to talk about this a lot because it's something the Lord taught me to do is... Um, if you want to have a friendship with somebody, you have conversation with them back and forth. Now, my husband is not a huge talker, but praise the Lord, he loves to listen. And so, I talk. It works well. It works good. I talk. And like we left church on Saturday night, and I was really um, touched by the message, and I'm talking to him. da 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 and the message was on being an imitator and how finding people that uh, follow Jesus and imitating them like they imitate the Lord. And I was like, oh my gosh, as Pastor Jonathan's talking, I'm like, this is what I did with Mike Bickle. It's what I did. It is the only person that I don't personally know. Praise the Lord, I had a mom and dad that led me in the truth um, of the word. And so I learned a lot from them. But it's the only person that I don't know that I actually looked at them and said, I want to be like him. Like, I want to act like he acts. Like, I saw the way he interacted with people and the way he prayed so personal with the Lord. And, and so I'm telling a friend, I'm like, I was thinking that's like what I've done with Mike Bickle. Like, I've, I've totally taken what he said, and he said to pray this prayer, so I prayed it. And he said, go to the Lord this way, so I did it. And, and, you know, this is what we do. And so I'm telling Fred this. And, he, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. He goes, yeah, you have, yeah, yeah. And then I said, what about you? So I asked him, what about you? He's like, well, I'd have to say John Eldridge has made a real impact in my life. And he told me about his thing. Maybe not as exciting. Maybe not as long, right? But he told me his heart about it. I'm like, oh, yeah, I could totally see that. So we're going back and forth, right? This is what we need to do with the Lord. Yes. Everybody stop. Think about your prayer time. Think about your quiet time. Think about your Bible time. Really, right now. How much do you stop and ask God something and listen? I had to learn to do this, and I'm still learning. Like, we are in a relationship with the Lord, and that relationship requires us to have a conversation with Him. And as we're reading His Word, His letter to us, we stop and we go, there I am. There I am. I ravish your heart. You love me. And we stop and we listen. Which I'm going to talk about what that looks like in a second. Another thing is asking for more revelation. Lord, give me more revelation on this. I don't understand it. I, I don't, I understand it with my mind. I don't feel it. Give me more revelation. These are, these are some of the things we want to do as we're studying the word, but as we're doing this class also. <clears throat> any, any questions, any comments so far? Anyone? Okay. <clears throat> Let's go to page six. 
When I say revelation, I'm going to clarify that just very briefly. I encourage you to go home and read this little thing I have on it. Revelation comes from the word photizo. Photizo is the word where we get photo from. Everybody look at me. We have a shutter. The shutter in our life is human understanding. Who goes there? I do often. I'm like, oh, let's figure this out. Let's try to understand this. But did they mean that? What did they mean when they said that? What, what am I supposed to do about this? Is this the right thing to do? Is that the right thing to do? What, I mean, they said it. You know, you, ah. I don't know if anybody else's brain is that way, but my brain is very active. And I have to stop. And I have to ask the Holy Spirit to give me revelation. That's what we do when it comes to the Word of God. When it comes to a situation, Holy Spirit, give me revelation. And this is what this Word does. When we ask the Holy Spirit to give us revelation, y'all do this all the time, like all the time, all the time. You don't have to say, Holy Spirit, give me revelation. Lots of times what I just say is, Holy Spirit, what do you think about this? Holy Spirit, what do you say? How do you feel about this situation? Okay? So what I'm saying pretty much is give me revelation. Give me your insight. So the, the shudder is human understanding. And what happens is when we ask him for that, the shudder lifts. And light comes in. He enlightens our mind. He enlightens our spirit man. He brings his truth in. And when light comes into a camera, what happens? What happens in the natural? An image is captured on the inside of it, right? And that's what happens. It's really awesome. When we say, Holy Spirit, how do you feel about me? How do you feel about the situation? And he opens the human understanding and he emblazons the truth of God, the image, the perspective of the Lord on the inside of us. And you do that over and over and over and over again. Your inner man begins to be changed. It begins to be changed. And when you start looking at a person that has been a frustration in your life or, or giving you a difficulties... Um, and you, Lord, how do you feel about that person? What do you say about that person? He gives you an image. And it develops into your image. So we want to do that with the word. As we are studying the Song of Solomon, we want to be asking the Lord, Lord, I hear what she's saying, that you like me. I hear it. And I know I'm supposed to believe that. But I need you to give me revelation of it. I need to know it. I can choose to say something because it's in the word of God and I do it all the time. Do y'all do that? You don't really feel it, but you choose it. You're like, the word of God says that, so I'm saying it. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And you're crying, you know, because you feel pitiful and weak. But you're like, greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. You're just choosing it, right? But what I say to the Lord is, Lord, I choose to believe this, but I want to feel it. I want to know it. I want whatever is keeping me from knowing that I know that to be true. I want you to remove that and emblazon your truth upon me. All right, we're almost there. Um, Page seven, um, this is <laughs> something I like to use, this phrase, ask, listen, agree. So we're talking about having this time with the Lord, whether it's time in his word, time in prayer, or just stopping, just stopping ourselves and going, okay, Lord, you and me, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this situation, this thought, whatever. And what we want to do is we want to ask the questions. Okay, I give this example. Um, I was in the middle of turmoil with um, a situation, and I went to the Lord, and I was having a lot of really stupid thoughts. Y'all know what those look like? Like just 
crazy. Like, woo, like I don't think that could ever happen, but I, you know, felt like it was. And I went to the Lord one day and I was just like, Lord, what do you say about this? And just that quickly, it's a lie. I'm like, oh. So I asked and I listened. Now what do I do? I agree. God, that's a lie. I agree with you. Now, this is a very forceful conversation I'm having with the Lord right now. Love you. This is a very forceful conversation I'm having with the Lord right now. I don't always have these kind of like, God, what are you saying? You know, it might just be like, Lord, what are you saying about this? You know, that's, that would be more normal. So then I said, well, if it's a lie, what's the truth? I asked a question, and just that quickly the word came up to me. I am completing the work that I have begun. So what do I do? I agree. God, you are completing the work that you have begun. I agree with you. This is the conversations we want to have. Now, different people hear the Lord in different ways. Um, and I really believe you can actually develop hearing him better by um, actually stopping and listening. <laughs> there we go. Um, you can develop, like some people are like, oh, I don't ever hear God. Yeah, you do. You know how I know you do? The Bible says, my sheep hear his voice, and he does not follow the voice of a stranger. So when the enemy lies to you and says, you don't ever hear God's voice, then you go, no, that's a lie. The truth is I do hear the voice of the Lord because I'm one of his sheep, so I hear his voice. So, so every one of us hears the voice of the Lord. Sometimes it's just an impression, like everything's going to be okay. So what do I do with that impression? Do I just go, oh, great, everything's going to be okay? I agree with it. I turn it into, Father, I thank you that you have this in your hands and everything's going to be okay. We agree with those impressions. We agree with like pictures. Sometimes the Lord gives us pictures. Sometimes the Lord, lots of time for me, it's the word that he just brings up a verse, brings up a verse. It might be, I have a regular verse for fear. God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. That's my regular go-to verse for fear because fear was a big, big part of my life, and I still have to fight it, but not like I used to because I agreed with God for all these years, right? But I remember one day I was in huge amount of fear. Like, I was just overwhelmed with fear. And I'm like, God, instead of going to my go-to verse, I had a conversation with the Lord. God, what do you say about this? Just that quickly, perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Lord, why do you say that? Because I love you perfectly. I love that person perfectly. Oh. So if you love them, I don't have to fix this, right? Because you are. Yeah. See, the Lord takes us into this place of conversation with him. Instead of just speaking the word, we're actually communing with him. This is your goal for life. For life is to be in friendship and communion with the Lord. When we make peace our goal, we go after peace. When we make health our goal, we go after health. When we make him our goal, then all of a sudden we know him and he's the Prince of Peace. And we know him and he's Jehovah Rapha, our healer. We know him. That is our goal. Um, the gal's not here. She's going to be joining us for the class. But Trish Toons, um, when we did this class a year ago, she said the Lord gave her this picture of a table for two. Everybody's sitting at their table for two. And your table for two looks different than mine. You have different decorations. You have different food. It's different. Like, I can tell you about my table, too, with the Lord, and you can learn from that, and I can hear your table, too, with the Lord, and I can learn from that, but all of our tables are going to look different, but we want to sit down at the table. And when I say sit down at the table, I pace when I'm talking to the Lord a lot, 
And that's okay. That can be me sitting at my table. You know, I can be pacing in my, my living room. But, but if I really want to focus, I stop. I'm like, okay, here I am, Lord. I'm before your throne. Here I am. Like, I literally will make myself stop and be like, here I am, Father. And I see him lean forward, and I have a conversation with him. I want this more. Yeah. Like, I, I, have, I have ran after this for the last 10 years, but I want this more. I don't want a day to go by that I haven't stopped and had a conversation with the Lord. Like, an intimate conversation with him. Do y'all want this? Yes. Yes. Good. Awesome. Yes. Song of Solomon 1. Yes. I just have a comment. Yeah. The Lord showed me that, you know, that the scripture that says, uh, I, have plan, I have plans for you. They're good plans mm -hmm. and not plans for evil. And he showed me that sometimes we can seek this, oh, I don't want to miss the plan God's got for me. What's the plan does God have for me? That's the plan, the yeah. good plan yeah. that he has for us far and above any other plan. Absolutely. Is, is to know him. And we can search this other plan without... That's good. I, I, am, I am convinced that if we will seek this relationship with the Lord, first and foremost, everything else falls into place. I am convinced of it. We, there are things the Lord will put on our hearts during... Our one on time, one time with him, and he'll go. You know what, Carrie? I want you to take care of your heart issue there with that person. Well, then I have to do something, right, gals? I just don't sit at my table for two. I'm like, okay, Lord, I just am asking you to speak to me clearer, to show me the root of this. I I talk to him, but I have to walk it out. But I walk it out because he talked to me. He told me how to do it. There's times where I'll say, God, I want freedom in this area. I do not know how to do it, so just teach me. And he will. It's really awesome. But it's that relationship that leads to victory in the other areas. All right, we're on page nine. We will not normally go through this many pages, but that's our intro to Song of Solomon, and you got some cool teaching in there also. Song of Solomon, 1 verse 1. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. That's the verse. Okay, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Solomon wrote 105 songs. Um, it's in 1 <laughs> Kings 4.32 that tells us that. This one was called the Song of Songs. So like King of Kings, Lord of Lords, it's the top of the top. This was the top song. Okay. Uh, the next verse is verse 2, and it's, it's, it's spoken by the Shulamite, but I want to introduce something that the Passion Translation footnote said in this box. You see that box? Um, the word for Shulamite and the word for Solomon are taken from the same Hebrew root word. One is masculine and the other is feminine. The name Solomon occurs seven times in the book, which points us to the perfect king, Jesus Christ. We are one spirit with our king, united with him. We have become the Shulamite. So they're making this point that when you're reading this, and I already said this to you, Solomon is Jesus, we're the Shulamite, okay? That's what we want to see ourselves as. So the very first, um, or the second verse, the Shulamite is speaking here. And she says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for your love is better than wine. I want to stop, and I had skipped over something on page 8. Um, as we're reading the Song of Solomon, of course we're going to be talking about um, love and personal things. Mike Bickle, he shares about how he had to start instructing people about we don't have date night with Jesus. He's not our boyfriend. This is not, we're reading these things. We're not reading them out of a literal interpretation, but a spiritual interpretation here. And so we'll get to lots of stuff that we'll read this way, but we always want to think, okay, what does that mean spiritually? Which of course I'll, I'll be telling you. But um, this verse is a great verse. 
Um, I do this all through the Song of Solomon. I go, oh, I love this verse. But just fall in love with these verses, gals. Like, get them in your language. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. This would be like us praying, Father, let the Holy Spirit touch me with the truth of your word. I want my heart touched. You guys, when I was just sharing that story, and I said, Lord, what do you say about this? And he said, he said, perfect love casts out fear. That was a kiss. That was like, Carrie, here it is. Don't just get out your cordons and look up all the verses on peace. I do that. I love, I love lists of verses on peace and my anti-fear verses and my trust in God verses. And I love, I love, love, love to do that. And because I have done that, it's in here. And so then when I say, God, what are you saying? He kisses me. He touches my heart with the word that I need at that moment. My perfect love casts out fear. I'm like, oh, that's the truth. And we stop. It's a kiss of the word. Kiss me with the kisses of your word. Touch my heart, Lord, with the truth of your word. I want to know the most deep things of your word. I do not want to just read through the Bible in a year and not Amen. get touched by it. If I sit down with the word, I'm asking, Holy Spirit, this is, this is so key. And I was actually taught this as a little girl. When you open up the Bible to read it, you ask the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you. That's what she's doing here. Touch me with the truth of your word. Kiss me with the truth of your word. Now, this is being written to Jewish people of the day where the rabbis, when they were going to read the Torah, they would lift up the scroll, they would kiss it. They called it the kiss of the Torah. And then they would open it up and read it. It was the kiss of the word. They understood this, this um, picture, the kiss of the word. Kisses are intimate. They're not high fives, and they're not shaking your hand. Those are what happen, literally, and I know that kisses can happen in these, these settings, but most of the time, those happen in church services or conversations with people where we're like, oh yeah, God showed me this the other day and, and somebody provokes you and we, we, but kisses happen when we go, God, I want to know this. I want to understand it. I don't want to just read it and in my mind go, yeah, okay, I agree with that. God loves me. I want to feel it. I want it to touch me in my inner man. Touch my heart, Lord with the truth of your word. It is these times with the Lord that we press into that lead us to walking in the first commandment. It leads our heart into loving the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's what it does. I want to teach on that later on, and I, I haven't gotten that ready yet, but to love the Lord with all of our heart our inner man, our soul, our mind, our will, and emotions, right? To love the Lord with all of our heart, soul, mind, our thoughts, and our strength. I talk to the Lord about my thoughts quite a bit because I can act right and not be right, right? We can be around somebody and we can interact with them properly and we can walk away and just be like, why do they always do that? You know, you're just thinking these thoughts, you know. They always act that way. And, and I want to love him with my thoughts. Amen. I want to walk away from somebody and in my mind I'm thinking, oh, God bless them. Hunt them down with your love. Show them your kindness. I want to love him with my thoughts. So, so we do that by trying really, really, really hard, right? <laughs> I 
I try. I am a trier, man. I'm going to just try to be nice. I'm going to try to think right. I'm going to try to talk right. And I have found it's exhausting and it doesn't work. Amen. Amen. But if we have a relationship with the Lord, then he starts to pour his kindness and mercy into us. I was Romans 5, 5. The, whole, the love of God has been poured out by the Holy Spirit. Um, there was a point in my life I was super, super mad at somebody, and I had all the right to be. Anybody been there? I mean, it was legal. It was, I had all the right to be mad. And um, I, I was so upset at this person. I was so upset at the choices they were making. I was so upset at the way they had handled their life and me and how it had affected me right? That's upsetting when somebody does something that affects us really negatively. And I knew my heart was supposed to be right toward them. And you can know something because you know the word, but it just is like a big struggle. And so I went to the Lord and I said, okay, Lord, um, I need to be free in this area. I've, I've got to, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know I'm supposed to forgive. I know I'm supposed to love. Yes, you've forgiven me of everything. You've, I knew all the stuff, but it just wasn't, it was just a big, big mess. And um, the Lord had me start praying for this mer person, mercy. Father, I'm asking you for your maximum amount of mercy to be poured out upon this person that you are allowed to give any human being. I don't know how much that is, but I'm asking you for that for this person. Like, just mercy. God, you're the God of mercy upon their life. And, and I just started praying that over them. And God started to develop in me a heart of mercy towards this person. Like, grace and mercy. Not something out of carry trying to be right, but God transforming me into his image. And that is what that's we, <laughs> that's okay. And that is what we want to do. We want to ask the Lord, Lord, kiss me with the truth of your word, like deep, like make it real. Not us reading the word and trying to walk it out, but real, like real. Um, in, on page nine, three-fourths down, it says the Passion Translation footnotes. <clears throat> Anyone want to say anything? I feel like somebody should say something. I've been talking for one hour straight. Is that possible? And it's awesome. Oh, good. Thank you. Good. Awesome. Okay, the Passion Translation footnotes. I like this because what's the verse said? It says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his word. Okay, so they address this let him statement. To enter the doorway of Jesus' heart, we must begin by saying, let him. We are. Only bring him a yielded heart and must let him do the rest. That's good. This is what I'm talking about. Not striving. Not striving. God's loving grace means that he will be enough for us. We can let him be everything to us. We don't begin by doing but by yielding. This is uh, something the Lord is actually really, really pressing on my heart right now in my life. But he has been for a period of time. And um, I get it. Like, I understand what he's saying. But I don't do it really well. And it's this whole concept of doing my part and letting him do his part. Okay? So, I believe we all have a part. We have our yes to bring. We have our yielding of our will. God will not force himself on anybody. So we come to him and we're like, God, here I am. My heart hurts in this area. I, I'm upset. I'm wounded. I'm mad. Whatever. I want to fix it. I can feel that wanting to fix it, wanting the answer. Just tell me the 10 things I need to do and I will do them. Right? But here I am. I can't. Come to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden. 
right? Burdened down, weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon, learn from me. And I would be like, Lord, teach me. And I do this all the time. I'm like, Lord, show me how to quit doing what is yours to do. Show me how to do only what's mine to do. And that's what this let, let him, let him kiss me with the kisses of his word. Lord, help me get out of the way. Then I'm trying and I'm striving, but I'm just coming to you. And I'm like, here's your word, Lord. Show me your truth. Instead of where's the answer? Where's the answer? Where's the answer? <laughs> right? Talk to me. Did you ever do the Bible flip open thing? <laughs> it quit working so much that I don't do it anymore. But, <laughs> but where's my word? You know, instead of like, Lord, just sitting before the Lord. What do you want to say, Julie? I read a thing the other day that said that scripture that says be still and know mm. God. Yeah. Right. Be still doesn't just mean to be quiet. It means to let go. Mm. So good. let go. And yeah. On God. Yeah. Watch yeah. It. Yeah, and so I talk to the Lord a lot because I'm like, Lord, I'm not going to be lazy here. I refuse. I want to be. Sometimes I just boom, turn everything off. Nobody gets. The other day I said to Fred, we could, we could just, uh, you know, move to Hawaii. <laughs> just live on the beach. You know, and nothing's even like that big of a deal in my life. And sometimes you're just like, I just don't want to like do life. Like, I don't even want to clean the dishes. Let's just sell the house with dirty dishes. I don't know. <laughs> and we have these things, and then we go to the Lord, and we're like, okay, Lord, that's not you. I don't want to be lazy. That's not you. I don't want to be lazy. I want to do what you tell me to do. And I don't want to do what you don't tell me to do. So we're at this worship night. And um, at my mom's church, and and I'm on the floor, having floor time with the Lord. That I highly recommend it. And and I'm just like just talking to him. There's nothing heavy on my heart. I just want more of him. And I'm like, Lord, I'm just here. I want I want more of you. Touch my heart. Chase me down, Lord. You know. And I'm just talking to him, and and. Then I hear him say, literally, like out of the blue, I'm not even asking him for his opinion on this, right? <laughs> and out of the blue, but I am telling him I want more of him. He says, um, so Josh is all mine, right? That's my son. Yeah, he's all yours. All God, I've given to him, you to him, like a hundred thousand times <laughs> I've given him to you. <laughs> he's all yours. So if he's mine, now literally the Lord's saying this to me. So if he's mine, then all of his decisions that he makes are in between him and me, right? <laughs> yeah, that, that's what that means. So him and Emma's life are mine, right? Yeah. So what they decide to eat is in between me and him. Yeah. I know all about what you should eat and not eat. Don't talk to me about it ever. <laughs> so how they spend their money is in between me and them, right? Because they're mine. I mean, he's really driving home here on this. Yes. So Christine is mine. Yeah, she's yours. What she chooses to do with her life is mine, right? Yeah. If she chooses to, she does mission work. If she chooses to go off on the mission field for a year at a time, that's in between her and me, right? <sighs> yeah. So, it's like this, really? Do you really? I mean, he's like talking to me about, you say you want more of me. You say you want to give me all. You say that you want to lay everything down. Let's have a conversation. And in that moment, it's a kiss from the Lord on my life. Because it's something that can either make me or break me. Is how much I want to help my kids. Make wise decisions and do the right thing. He touches us with these truths when we ask for them. 
when we say, God, really talk to me. Like, really, I want to hear your voice. He talks to us. Mike Bickle makes a comment. He'll say, if God starts the conversation, usually you're in trouble. (laughs) 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 Otherwise, it's us that needs to settle our busy mind and our busy activity and go, God, I want to hear from you. I want to hear more of your heart, more of your desire. What are you saying? And in those times, we've given him permission to go, so you want to give me that? Oh, yeah, we, I do. So what do I do, gals? Do I just go, okay, I just give them to the Lord, and I don't have any opinion, and I'm just good to go? No. It's a partnership with the Lord. Okay, Lord, anoint me to trust you. Show me more of your heart for my family so I can trust you even more than I do right now. Show me how to be used by you as a voice piece in their life and close my mouth when I'm not supposed to. Show me where I'm supposed to help and where I'm supposed to let them grow up. Show me. I'm not having this mental... What do you think? What do you think? Should you like help your grown children? What do you think? What do you, what do you think about this situation? I'm not trying to figure out and read 40 different books on the subject. I'm having a conversation with the Lord and he uses people in our life. That's right. But it's almost always confirmation instead of information. When we're talking to somebody about a situation in our life, we should have, we should have already hashed out that thing thoroughly with the Lord. That when somebody says something, it's confirmation to us instead of this whole new set of information. Okay? And if it is, then we need to double bring that to the Lord. Like, you know, they're like, oh, you need to cut your kids off. And we're like, oh, okay, great. Then just do that. Just don't help them at all. Is that what the Lord put in your heart? Is that what the Lord put in your heart? You just need to tell that person. Have you ever, I've done this. Have you ever told somebody, you just need to tell that person this, 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 and this. And it's all right. Like, it's all right. And then I'll say stuff like that still even now. And then I'll go, stop. Do not listen to a word I just said. (laughs) Go talk to Jesus about it and do what he says to do. That's what we do. That's what we do. We talk to Jesus about it. Kiss me with the kisses of your word. Here I am, Lord. Touch me. Talk to my heart. Tell me what you're thinking. Um, Okay. I'm going to go through page 10 and... um, and talk about 11. That's funny. And 12. <laughs> and, then we'll, and then we'll have a little time of prayer. <laughs> Are y'all having fun? Are y'all getting provoked? Ooh, let me provoke you to more. It's okay. It's all weird, and we just like live with the weirdness. I, if, if I can provoke myself, because I do, whenever I teach, I provoke myself. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so good. I need to do that. Like, literally, I do, like, all the time. I need to do that. I was listening to the last time I taught Song of Solomon. I was like, that is right. I forgot. Like, I forgot that's the way we do this thing. And so if I can provoke you guys, if the only thing you get out of this out of this class is you learn to sit and talk to Jesus and have him talk to you and you respond, ask, listen, agree. That is the goal. That is the goal. Ask, listen, agree. Ask, listen, agree. And we agree with our mouth. We don't agree just with our mind. We can agree with our mind, but we actually need to speak it out. We'll talk about that later on. Can't teach everything today, you know. But that is our goal, is to have communion with the Lord. Communion with the Lord. Wow. I was just thinking about the garden, you know, in the garden, in the beginning. 
says that they walked and talked with God every day. They walked and talked with God. They were given their jobs, right, to tend the garden. But they walked and talked with God. And I'm like, oh, there's such a call to our heart to walk and talk with God. Um, Kiss of the Word, page 10. These speaks of intimate encounters with the Lord around his word. I've already talked about this. Um, So what we want to do is we want to be in the word, the written word, and we want to talk to God about the written word as we're reading it. And um, Joyce Myers years ago talked about that's canning. I, I canned one time. One time I canned. And I will never do it again. But I think it's awesome when people do because they grow their garden and then they pick their tomatoes, is what I did, and then they can their tomatoes and then they sit it up. What I did was put it up on my counter and, or my cabinet and looked at them. They were very pretty. I'm like, I did that. And then I grabbed them whenever I needed them, right? And I used them in my soup or whatever dish. And so what we do is we can the word, and it grows, and it matures. It becomes fruitful in our life, and we're canning the word. So I'm canning the word, perfect love casts out fear. And I'm canning that word. God, your perfect love is so good. I'm canning this word over years of time. And then one day I say to the Lord, Lord, what do you say about this situation? And he says... Perfect love casts out fear. Oh, I now have opened that canned word up, and it is feeding my life. So we want to be in the word. We want to be reading the word. We want to be talking to God about the word. God, what do you say to me about that? A verse pops up to us. What do you say to me about that? Where does that fit in my life? I highly recommend writing all over your Bible, like all over it. My Bible, there's parts of it I can barely read, but circle, underline. Um, uh, Priscilla Schreier was saying that when a a portion of verse really pops out of her and she gets major revelation on it, she'll actually date it. I wish I had done that all along. She'll write down the date. The Lord spoke something really tender to her about that. Um, Journal on the Word. I love journaling. I love writing down what the Lord shows me personally about the word. Get the word in you, the kisses of his word. And when we can the word, when we get the word in us, then the Lord reminds us of the word when we need it. That's true. Uh, um, I don't know if I have that verse down here, but it says that the Holy Spirit brings to our remembrance the things that the Lord has spoken to us. Um, I recommend that as we go, turn the um, Song of Solomon into a prayer in your journals or if you want to just write it in this notebook. I have them periodically throughout right here is one of my own prayers that I turn this into. Um, I'm going to take three minutes to talk about page 11 and 12 and then I want you guys to read it at home. Um, This is something the Lord just really captured my heart with through growing um, in all of this is asking the Lord for the most important things. Um, I, I have said this before. I love to confess the Word of God. I love to pray out the Word of God. Um, I make little notebooks with the Word in it, and I put little sheets I actually think, well, I don't, I don't think I have it with me, but right now I have one that I typed out like about six or seven healing scriptures on, and then I've written things the Lord has talked to me as I've been reading those out and praying those out regularly. I really love, I love to do that, and I really um, encourage you all to do that. But the Lord really started to talk to me um, through teachings that I heard and things that just pricked my heart as I heard them about asking the Lord for the most important things, like the first and the best. 
And the first and the best is, Lord, I want to know you. Like, I want to know you. Like, really know you. I don't want to just read and hear somebody tell me that you're nice. I want to know that you're nice. Like, really, really know it. And um, (laughs) we know in Matthew 6.31, it says, Seek first the kingdom of God. And all these other things will be added to us. And it's this, it's kind of what we've been talking about. Just really, I want to know, I want to seek, I want to hear your voice more than anything else. I want to know your heart. And really asking the Lord for those things. Asking God to capture your heart. Lord, capture my heart with your goodness. Just show me how great you are. That will bring forth a level of peace over and above, a level of mercy over and above what we could ask for that specifically. Capture my heart with your heart. Psalms 27, we'll study this later on, but David, he said, one thing I desire of the Lord, this I will seek. I want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. I want to know him. I want to know him. I want to gaze upon his beauty. I want to see how good he is, how great he is. I want to just be totally captured by his kindness. And I want to inquire in his temple. I want to have a conversation with him. That's what what David prayed. That's what he said. One thing. This is the one thing I go after. The most important. So I go on, and and, um, page 11 and 12 is from a a blog that I write. I haven't written in it in a while. But um, I tell of a story of one day when I was in the prayer room out in Kansas City. And I'm pacing and praying, and I'm just praying mama prayers. I'm just like, Lord, I ask you. At the time, Josh was on the mission field. Um, Christina was at IHOP doing mission work. And I was like, Lord, I'm asking you, you know, protect my kids Keep them in perfect health. Lord, um, provide sponsors and supporters for them. Take care of their every needs. Lord, bring their spouses to them. Um, At the time, Josh hadn't met Emma yet. Lord, bring their spouses to them. I am praying mama prayers. You know what I mean? And I love mama prayers. I always pray mama prayers. But as I was walking, all of a sudden the Holy Spirit was, he said to me, Gary, pray for what's most important. Like he just said that as I'm pacing in this aisle, and then this is what starts coming out of my heart. Above all, Lord, I desire for Josh and Christina to love you. Holy Spirit, go after their hearts. All of their heart, all their mind, all their emotions. Captivate them, Father, with your love. Pull their heart to your heart. Have nothing get in between you and them. And I just started to pray in this vein. And I could, I could feel like the pleasure of God. I could feel him saying, yeah, go, go, go. This is the most important. Our hearts being captivated by his goodness. Our family's hearts being captivated by his goodness. That's the most important. That's the big deal. And that's why we're going to study through eight chapters of the Song of Solomon and just dig into the heart of God and his pull on how do we come more into this walk with him? How do we um, grow more in our heart capacity to not be distracted by the things of this world and be so affected by them but being affected by him? By him. All right. So um, I'm actually going to put on, we have 15 minutes. Of course, y'all don't have to run out um, when it's 1130, but that is the the set time. I'm going to put on um, some music, just some like little soft uh, soaking music. And we're going to... um, we're going to talk to Jesus about this and I feel like that's how we're going to end today 
we might have something else that I feel like the Lord's kind of laying on my heart. How's that volume? Is that, that's not too loud? All right, Lord, we just come to you right now. Everybody kind of just get settled, get, <laughs> get comfortable. While I'm, while I'm praying, I'm not praying um, for you to listen to me. I really want everybody to pray, really interact with what the Lord's saying to them. All right, Lord, here we are, your daughters. We settle ourselves down. <laughs> we settle ourselves down before you, our daddy. Good daddy. You're the good daddy. We settle our hearts down. Settle our mind, our emotions. Right now, just even the, the, the thoughts of, oh, I need to do this more. Oh, I, I, need, I need to... I need to to try harder. I need to talk to God more. I need to read his Bible more. I need to pray more. Just all that we lay down and we come and look at you. We set our eyes on you. The good, good father. Who has good plans and good desires for us, your daughters. And right now, Lord, I ask for myself. I ask for every lady in this classroom. Chase us down with your love. I ask you, Lord, that you would not relent until you have all of our hearts, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. That you would captivate us with your goodness and your kindness, your mercy. Show us you, Lord. Show us you. Holy Spirit, I ask you to teach us how to hear and how to respond. Let's ask the Lord for that, ladies. Show us, Lord, how to hear your voice, how to respond. Touch our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes with your truth. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his word. Touch my heart, Lord, with the truth of your word. Right now, we break agreement. <coughs> we break agreement with a lie that says we don't hear God's voice as clear as others right now gals break agreement with that lie and you just do that by saying I break agreement with the lie that says I don't hear the voice of God <coughs> I come into the agreement with you Lord that I do hear your voice and the voice of a stranger I will not follow Right now, I want us to actually practice this <coughs> right now. Lord, I ask you to, everybody, I want you guys to speak to anything that pops in your mind, an area of struggle in your own flesh um, with, a, with another person, a situation that you're having to deal with, just whatever. Like I said that, and you're like, oh yeah, that one. Lord, we're asking you to 
touch us with the truth of your word about that. What are you saying, Lord? What are you saying? (laughs) Okay, see, he's leaning in. He's listening to you. He sees. He sees our disappointment. He cares about our confusion. He cares that that's important to us. Now, Lord, we ask you to speak to us about it. What do you say? Then I want you all talk to him back about it. Father, thank you for what you're saying. Thank you for your truth. I believe you. I believe you. We forgot, Lord. Thank you for reminding us. Thank you, Lord, for the process that you're taking us through. That our hearts be fully surrendered to you. Fully yours. Fully yours. Let's just tell him how we want to be his friend. Lord, I want to be your friend. I want to I want to be your friend. I want to walk with you as a friend walks with a friend. I want to hear your voice as a friend knows a friend's voice. I want to know your voice. I want to cherish your voice, Lord. I want to love your voice. Holy Spirit, cause my heart (laughs) to delight in hearing the voice of the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else have anything they want to pray out? This is opened. We set our eyes on you, Jesus. You are faithful. You're faithful. Lord, we ask you to touch our inner man. Deep. Deep. Heal everything that needs to be healed. Draw our hearts to your hearts. What do you want to say to us individually? What do you want to say to us as a group in this class? What do you want to say to us? Touch my heart with 
the truth. Thank you, Father, for being our provision. Thank you, Lord. Even when we are not asking, you are providing. Thank you, Lord. And your way is usually the better way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. You are a provider. We thank you, Lord, that you're a provider. You provide for all of our needs in every area of life. You do. Hmm. Holy Spirit, reveal that to us even more, that the Lord is our provider, that he's generous in every area. Mm. We don't have to figure it out. Lord, we agree with that. We ask you, Lord, empower us. Empower us. Teach us. Show us, Holy Spirit, how to seek the Lord. Personally, what our table for two looks like. Empower us, Lord. Father, we just come to you right now and we just say, um, we give you us. We give you us. And we ask you to do what only you can do in our hearts and in our minds, in our emotions, to capture them with your love and your kindness. that first and most you would be our everything That's right. first and most Lord we're serious we, we, want, we want our heart to be completely captured by your goodness and your kindness and your nature and your love we want to know you more. We want to really know who you are to us in every area. Thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you that we don't have to figure it all out. That's right. <laughs> That you already have it figured all out. We just have to trust you mm -hmm. and listen to you 
and, and believe you mm -hmm. and have faith in what you say. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. That's freedom. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your freedom. That we can rest in your freedom, not in our striving. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hallelujah. Mm, we just hand it to you. Sweet Jesus. We do, Sweet Lord, Jesus. right now. We just give. Yes. We give our lives once again to you. Yes. Move within us. Yes, Lord. We believe you, Lord. Mm, thank you, Lord, that you just continue as we continue to give our lives. You continue to take more and more ground in our hearts that our hearts are completely completely surrendered to you because we know you're good we know it we know you're good we know you're trustworthy show us more show us more <coughs> we believe your word Lord thank you Lord Thank you, Jesus. We love you. glad, Lord, that you love us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So right now, I just um, seal this time in the blood. Um, let's just ask the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we just ask you to um, take us through this next week. Like, like, get our attention. Remind us. Help us to pay attention to our relationship with the Lord, that we pay attention to the Lord. Help us to ask, to listen, to respond. We want to. We just really, really need your help, Lord. So we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would help us. You are our helper. Thank you. Just thank you for this time together. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> awesome. Does anyone have anything they want?